who have surrounded you. This is what I know with, without a shadow of a doubt. I know this to be a fact that it takes a lot of faith to do what you're doing right now. It takes a lot of faith to do anything in the body of Christ right now. We're in a place we've never seen before. We've never been here before, but this is what I know. Jesus is still Lord. The Father is still on the throne. God still sits high in the heaven and looks down low on his people. He's not asleep. He's not on vacation. And he's not surprised by anything that's going on in the UK, the US, or any other nation, or any other continent. God is fully in control. That's what makes me happy. And that's what makes all of us as saints of God know that God is still in control. Before I get started, I do want to say a few things. Uh, I want to tell you, if you haven't already gotten my, uh, my CD, Hear the Roar, it is the one of the most exciting songs that I have done to date. Now, I know that many of you love Days of Elijah, There's No God Like Jehovah. Uh, so I'm not going to give anything away in here, but let me tell you something. This is a song that is sweeping the nations right now. It's called Hear the Roar. And let me tell you, the church, it's time for the church to rise up and to roar again. It's time for the church to rise up and open its mouth and begin to declare the wonderful, wonderful word of the living God. And so this song, if you haven't downloaded it, I want to encourage you to go to judyjacobs.com, download this song, <laughs> and then get your shouting shoes on. Now, this is what I need for you to understand. Whenever I do um, albums or projects, it takes me a long time because I've been in the studio I've been with the, uh, you know, I've been with the, the, uh, all of the studio people, the producers, the, all of the, all of the, all of the, and so by the time I'm finished with the project and they put it in my hand, I don't want to see that thing for a long time. And if any of you know anything about recording, you know what I'm talking about. But let me tell you something. If I listen to this all the time, you better believe it's anointed. Glory to God. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to download Hear the Roar. It's going to, it's going to pump you up. It's going to put a shot. It's going to put fire in your bosom. It's going to put fire in your belly. It's going to put fire in your house. And it's going to really put you in a place of anointing and boldness and power and authority you never even thought about. So you need to get that. And then I want you to have tapestry of love. This is God's covenant plan for your life. If you've ever wondered anything about covenant, this, this book answers all the questions about covenant. He talks about, I talk about the power of covenant. I talk about the people of the covenant. I talk about covenant with leaders, covenant of marriage. Woo, that's a big one. The, the mentorship covenant because iron sharpens iron you need to be around people who are going to sharpen you like you have done with all these women all of you women who are watching today let me tell you something iron sharpens iron i want to be around people of like faith like spirit like destiny and like anointing boom 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 all right i'm watching here and as i'm watching here i want to see some amens when i say something that you agree with right here so get ready for that because i'm going to prophesy over the next hour okay and then he talks about a new covenant. Oh, aren't you thankful for the new covenant? Oh, glory. And then it talks about the characteristics of covenant, covenant with outsiders, violations of covenant. And then it, it addresses unholy covenant, uh, which unholy covenants, which you really, really need to be aware about. And uh, it's a forward by my dear pastor, uh, Pastor Rod Parsley, and then many others. You need to order this, get this for somebody on your Christmas list and, and be done with it. Just uh, 
get four, five, seven, eight, ten of them, and then just say Merry Christmas, and you're done. Just mark them off of your list. And I love marking off list. I don't know if anybody out there has list, but I love marking off my list. <laughs> so, uh, Apostle, I am so excited about Pioneer Women Leadership Conference. I am so excited about calling women out of positions of a bystander, observer, and a victim mentality. I am so excited about women rising up. I'm excited about women using their voice and becoming an end time army of Holy Spirit warriors. And this is what this song is about. You're going to want it. But I, I'm, I, I stand as a mentor and I've mentored probably almost 2000 women that have come through my mentorship at the International Institute of Mentoring. And so it's amazing to me how women, how God is raising up powerful women. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but God is using women like he's never used women across the board, not only in, this, in the church, but also in the secular field. We're, we're, we're seeing women that are rising up in, in, uh, you know, in the Fortune 500 companies who are leading Fortune 500 companies. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh, your sons and your daughters. Shall your old men will drink, your young men and all my servants and all my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Now, who am I talking to right here on this uh, chat right here? Who am I talking to about the young women? Let me see who you are. Let me see some amens. Let me see some uh, clapping. Let me see something. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There you go. There you go. Let me hear it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me hear it. Let me see it. I just want to know who I'm talking to, because this is what I, I'm going to do. I'm going to prophesy today. I'm just going to prophesy over you. Is that okay if I prophesy today, Apostle? I just prophesy over these women. If I just speak into them that God has spoken into me about, because I've been praying about you. I've been praying about y'all. And, 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 and God has told me some things that he wants me to tell you about who you are and what God wants to do in the United Kingdom. Now, who am I talking hey. to? Who yes. am I talking to? Me, God me, is me, saying, me, 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 it's me, me, time me. for the United Kingdom of the Church of Jesus Christ to unite and to, and to expand and to broaden the kingdom of God. This yes. Is what I, know. I, I am a kingdom runner. I am a kingdom runner. I'm a kingdom runner. And here's who I run for. I run only for the king. I'm a kingdom runner and I run only for the king. So I'm, I'm in this race and I've made up my mind. I'm going to get to the end of this thing. I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm yes. not giving in. I'm not giving into this culture. The Bible yes. says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may present that which is holy and pleasing unto God. So you can't align yourself with what the world is saying right now. You've got to keep, God told Jeremiah, you keep your eyes on me. Don't you even look at their faces. You just keep your eyes on me and you keep moving and you just keep moving and you just keep moving because the church wants to st stop. They want to stand. They want to throw, they want to fold their, their arms. They just want to look. They just want to be comfortable. They just don't, don't know. Jeremiah said, it's like fire. It shut up in my bones. Yes. I can't contain it. I got to tell somebody. I got to do something. I just can't sit here. I can't just sit here anymore. I've got to have the Holy Spirit do a brand new work in my life. Amen. Now, give God a praise right there, right there, and right there. So I, I, I'm going to prophesy. Now, this is what I know. If you're not saying it, then you won't see it. If you're not saying what this book says about you, if you're not declaring what this book says about you, you certainly are not going to see it. And if you're not seeing it, it's because you're not saying it. That's why the Bible says that the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, 
I am healed. healed. Let Amen. the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Whosoever shall say to that mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say, then you shall have whatsoever you say. This is a time you've got to begin to speak the word of God. This is the year and the decade rather of the mouth where God is watching what you're saying. We're already into the Jewish New Year of 5781. We're already there. We're a happy new year. Just happy new year. Rosh Hashanah, September 27th was my birthday. Praise God. And we Hallelujah. entered into a brand new Jewish year of 5781. So now God is watching what you're saying. So I'm going to prophesy to you and I'm going to tell you it's time for you to start declaring what this book says. You can't declare what the doctor says about you, about COVID and about your family. Now, you can't declare what the bank says about you. You can't declare what the marriage counselor says about your marriage. You got to declare, I, God says, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. You got to declare Isaiah 53 5 by his stripes I am healed Peter said by his stripes I was healed you were healed that means it's already done amen so we as Christians we as the blood bought we as the church watch this of the living God have got to start and begin and again to start declaring the word of God over our children over our grandchildren and tell the devil you will not have my children you will not have my grandchildren Come on. you will not have my marriage you will not have my body you will not have my mind you will not have my ministry I declare I am the blood bought I am covered by the blood and no demon, no devil of hell has any power over me. Thank you, Jesus. I've got to stop screaming. Amen. So I'm just going to try to start talking instead of screaming. <laughs> you can scream. <laughs> this time that you're in right now is a moment in time where you're going to be marked by God. Everybody I'm talking to today, God's going to mark you. You hear me? There is coming a divine, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. There is a divine impartation that is coming into your personal life, to your spirit life, to your spirit man and woman. It's coming into your ministry. It's coming into your family. It's coming into your purpose and your destiny that will yield, watch this, fruit, fruit, fruit mm -hmm. is getting ready to be produced. Look at this. That will last for generations to come. Amen. If Jesus tarries, which I doubt he does, but your house and Mordecai told Esther, if you don't do something, if you don't do, if you don't go in, he said deliverance will come from another place and another people. But you and your family will be destroyed. I've come to tell somebody my family is not going to be destroyed. God has picked me for such a time as, as this. this. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is quickening your mortal body right now. The same power that got him up from the grave is quickening you to take authority and boldness over your family, over your house. Tell that devil to get out of your house, to get off of your family, to get off of your marriage, get out of your family, get out of your body. Get out of your mind and declare the worthy, the honor, the glory of Jesus in your house. Let's see if anybody's getting this. I'm just going to wait to see if anybody's um, getting this with some hand claps, with some amens. Now, who am I talking to? Who, 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 who am I talking to? Who, who, 
who, who's on here? Who, who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to anybody? Am I just talking to anybody? Uh, there's Shade Shady. There's Lee, there's Lee T. Keisha. Who, who else am I talking to? I'm talking about a remnant. I'm talking about a remnant. You're going to yield fruit. There's fruit that's coming. Number two, there's coming a specific sound out of your mouth this year. This season is coming a specific sound that will come from you, a roar, if you will. There's a roar. There's a roar that's coming. Listen, there's three things about a lion when he roars. Number one, a lion roars <laughs> to let other lions know this is my territory. This is my territory. You know that a lion is the is the king of the of the forest. So when a lion roars, when a lion roars, he's letting other beasts know this is my territory. And let me tell you something about the roar and the sound that's going to come out of your mouth with a with a shout and with worship and with praise and with this word of God. It is a sound that says, "Devil, you can't come any farther. This is my territory. This is my house. This is my children. This is my this is my church. This is my territory. You cannot come any farther. And your voice is going to be the voice that's going to tell the enemy, "Don't you come." one step closer or I'll knock your head off by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? There you are. 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 And then number two, the lion roars, number two, to tell the enemy and to let the enemy know that he's around. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh my God. When you open your mouth and you begin to declare the wonderful works of God, when you begin to declare the name of Jesus, when you begin to plead the blood of Jesus, when you begin to, to come into agreement with other people of light faith, light spirit, light destiny, light anointing, you're letting the enemy know, hey, listen, I have power, I have authority, and I'm here, and I'm not leaving. Let me tell you something. Did you know that you can, you can wear the devil out? With your shout, you can wear. Have you ever seen people? And have you ever, have you ever seen people who 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 are who don't know them their their, their authority in God? You ever said? You ever seen the, the? You ever seen? It's like it's like. Okay, devil. I know you're in here somewhere. On my count to three, and when I say three, you better get out of my house. You better get off my chair. He will eat you. Are you kidding me? He will eat you. You've got to stand with your shoulders back, your head lifted, your back straight. You've got to look him straight in the eye, not on your authority. Oh, no, baby. But by the power, because you got God the Father on the right side. you got Jesus, your elder brother, on the left side. you got the Holy Spirit directly in front of you. And all around you are millions and jillions of angels. That, are, that The Bible says that the angels of the Lord encampeth round and about those that fear him him. That's why you can go into the enemy's camp and take back everything that belongs to you because all you got to do is stand back and watch what the father does. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah. I've been waiting on y'all. I've been waiting for y'all. And so there's, there's a roar. And then number, number three, uh, 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 the, the, the lion roars specifically in the morning and then he roars specifically at night. You've got to get this CD. You've got to get this CD. And then tell me what you think about it on my Facebook. The lion roars in the morning. And then he roars fiercely in the morning and then at night. Why? Because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord 
is to be praised. If you can't praise him and if you run out of things to say, just start praying in the Holy Ghost because the devil can't understand the Holy Ghost anyway. And it's just, and, he, and it wears him out. And when you wear him out, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He will flee. He will flee. Uh, uh, and a roar, God says, this is a season when you're going into right now. We're from here going into 2021. Now, listen, you say, Sister Judy, what is going, what's going to happen with this? And what y'all going to do up there? And what? Let me tell you something. Only thing I know is God's already in, the, in tomorrow. The only thing I know is God's already in the 2021. And he's not up in heaven biting his fingernails. All right? He's not doing that. So this is what I know is that when you begin to go into this season and you begin to roar, that will alert the gates of hell that you are coming. When you go into this season with a shout, when you go into this season with the word of God in your heart, on your lips, in your mind, and you go into this season praying, you go into this season shouting, you go into this season praying in the Holy Ghost. It lets every demon of devil of hell know, I got to get out of here. They're, they're going to drive me nuts. Let me tell you something. You can wear his hind in out. Excuse my French. You can wear it out. So I prophesy that you're going to leave. You're going to take territory in this spirit realm. Listen, you're going to take territory in this spirit realm, spirit realm that you thought were only for the spiritual elite. Oh, 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 oh. you thought that what God's about to hit you with. Now, who am I talking to? Let me see who I'm talking to. I'm just talking to. Uh, a remnant. Now, who's the remnant that I'm talking to right now? Um, the, yeah, there's Ezem and there's Sade and then there's Ola, uh, Geraldine. Who else am I talking to about a remnant? I'm talking. I'm talking to a remnant. I'm. I'm talking to a called out one. I'm talking to a, a holy nation. I'm talking to a, a people that God. I'm talking. I'm talking to somebody today that says I'm fed up with what the devil's been lying. He's lied. He's a lie. Every time he opens his mouth, it's a, it's a lie. It's it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You have been chosen. You are anointed. It's not just for the spiritual elite. It's not just for apostle. It's just not for Marilyn Hickey. It's just not for Joyce. It's not. It's for everyone who is called according to his word. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you and you shall be witnesses of me, says the Lord. Let me just see you clapping your hands. Let me just let me just see you clapping your hands. Say that's me. Oh, that's me. Oh, I'm that. That's me. You're talking to me. If you say it, you'll see it. You're saying it. You'll see it. Woo! The Spirit of God says, "I have reserved Woo! a supernatural impartation." for you because you have come in faith. And God says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, I am, I am. I can take 35, 40 minutes right there and talk about I am. He says, I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. They who come to me must believe, must believe, must what? They must believe. They must what? They must believe. They must what? They must believe. I saw this the other day in the store and I thought, well, it's, it's Christmas. See, Christmas is coming. Haven't celebrated Thanksgiving here yet, but Christmas is coming. And I thought, you know what? That's, that's speaking to me more, more about not Christmas, but what God wants me to do. He's wanting you to believe. He says, I am a rewarder of those that believe. And I believe God that it will be just as God said it would be. So there's a supernatural importation that's coming to you just because you're believing. Open up your heart, open up your mind, because God says, I have reserved a special anointing for my handmaidens for this special hour. And then, and then I want to just tell you one more thing. God says, you're going to be a testimony this year. Write that down. 
Write that down. Matter of fact, write it down and put it up on your wall. Put it on your bathroom mirror. Put it somewhere where you can say, I'm going to be a testimony this year. And people are going to say, how in the world did God did that? That was God. That. How in the world did you do that? That was God that did that. How, how did you recover? That was God that did that. You're going to be a testimony. And somebody's going to say, oh, help me. Oh, pray for me. Oh, lead me to Jesus. Oh, can you help me? Hey, where do you go to church? Hey. You're going to be a testimony. Amen. amen. Who, who, who am I talking to? Who, amen. 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 Who, 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 am I, who am I talking to? Let me just see who's on this. I'm going to be a testimony. I'm going to be. A, I'm going to be. A, your children are going to be a testimony. Your husband's yes. going to be a testimony. Ah, your marriage going is going to be a testimony. testimony. Your mind's going to be a testimony. You're just going to be a testimony of the go glorious gospel, the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. God says you will be a testimony. I'm just prophesying to somebody. I want you to look at Jeremiah chapter one, Jeremiah chapter one and verse five, Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter one. And, and I want you to see what God told me to tell you. Ch Jeremiah chapter one <laughs> and, and, and verse five, he says, um, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew you before I formed you in the womb. I knew you before you were born. You hear me? Do you hear the word of the Lord? Before you were born, look at this. Look at this. I sanctified you. I put you apart. God had to place you in another city. God had to separate you from other people that you went to high school with, that you went to college with, university. God had to separate you from family because I had to sanctify you in order to get you ready for I'm, what I'm about to do in this last great day out pouring and harvest. He said, not only did I sanctify you, I ordained you as a prophet to the nations, to prophesy to the nations, to prophesy to your neighbors, to prophesy to your family, to prophesy to the atmosphere, to prophesy to the United Kingdom, to prophesy to your city, to prophesy to your church. I ordained you and I appointed you to be a prophet to our Lord God. He said, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a youth. I cannot speak because I'm a woman. Oh, I love what Joyce Meyer said. I love what Joyce Meyer, she's a great friend. And she said, God spoke to her one time and, and God said, uh, Joyce, I've, 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 uh, I've called you to go to the nations and, and I've called. And she said, Lord, do you know I'm a woman? <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> and God said, yes, I know you're a woman. <laughs> Oh, he knows you. Oh, he knows my name. Nobody else may not know my name, but God knows my name. Can I tell somebody out there listening right now? People right now don't even know your name. People in your church may not know your name, but God's getting ready to pick you out just like he did David. God's ready to get ready to pick you out just like he did a Joseph. God's ready to pick you out just like he did an Esther. God says, I'm going to exalt you. I'm about to let people be known by the time that they're in their prayer chambers. You've been in a place of prayer. You've been in a place of fasting where God says, I'm going to use you. I'm going to ordain you. And I'm. don't you say I'm a youth. Don't you say I'm too fat. Don't you say I'm black. Don't you say that I'm Hispanic. Don't you say I'm cute. Don't you say, he says, no, don't you dare do it. Don't you say that for you shall go to all to whom I send you and what Ever I command you, you shall speak. Who am I talking to? Who, 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 who am I talking to? Who? Who am I talking to? Go, 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 go. Oh, go, 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 go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Today, verse 10 says, Today, somebody say today, somebody say today, today, I appoint you to stand up. Whoa, I'm going to appoint you to stand up. I'm appointing you to stand up. I'm appointing you to stand up. I'm appointing you to stand up. 
I'm talking to somebody that needs to get up. I'm talking to somebody that's been down. I'm talking to somebody that's been in, in a valley. I'm talking to somebody that's been ready to throw in the towel and say, I can't do it. I'm just going to throw in the towel. I'm talking to somebody that says, I'm ready to give up my marriage. I'm talking to somebody that says, I'm ready to give up on ministry. I'm talking to somebody that says, I don't know who to trust. I'm talking to somebody that says, I'm so sick. I just want to go on and be, no, God's not finished with you yet. You've got to stand up, stand and having done all to stand, you still stand in the power of his might and tell the devil, I'm not moving, I'm not budging, I refuse to turn to the right, I refuse to turn to the left, I'm just going to stand and I'm going to see the glory of God in my life. Now, who am I talking to right now? He said, stand up, stand up against nations and kingdoms. And then listen to this. He says, some, you must root, uproot. You got to uproot some things in your house. You got to uproot some things. You got to go in your house. Some of you need to go in your house and you need to get rid of some things that's in your house. You need to get rid of some stuff that God's got God to show you what to get rid of. That house needs to be a holy habitation. Nothing cultural that your ancestors and all of that stuff. I come from a Native American and, and, and God began to deal with me about stuff that I had in my house. And he said, that's not of me. Get rid of that stuff. My house is a house of ho, ho, holy habitation. I wanted to be that the Holy Ghost is so comfortable and coming to my house. And all of heaven said, let's go down to that Jacob's house. Let's go down there. Oh, it feels so good. You just make a dwelling place for him. Oh, he inhabits the praises of his people. I want his place. You make a place for him to sit so he says he says you're gonna you, you, you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to stand up you're just gonna have to some of you you're gonna have to stand up and he said against nations and kingdoms some of you's gonna have to uproot and tear down and destroy and overthrow you're gonna have to uproot you gotta tear down you gotta destroy and you gotta overthrow others you gotta build up and plant others you gotta build up and plant and God's, you're going to see a, such a, a surge of, of the kingdom of God advancing on a level that is going to blow your mind. It's just really going to blow your mind how the harvest is coming. The harvest is coming. Who am I talking to? Am I, am I still, is anybody asleep or checking your emails or am I talking to anybody right there? Is there anybody right there that I'm talking to? I'm just, I'm just trying to see if there's anybody I'm talking to. I don't know. Maybe. There's Beverly, uh, there's Yvonne, I'm not, anybody else I'm talking, Victoria, anybody else I'm talking to, this is hitting you, this is hitting you, you get ready, the Holy Ghost is going to hit you in just a few minutes, the Holy Ghost is going to hit you, the Holy Ghost is going to hit you, the Holy Spirit of God is going to hit your life, the Holy Spirit of God is going to hit your body, it's going to hit your spirit, and you're going to see God do the unbelievable, the unthinkable, the impossible, you're going to see it, and then look what he says. He says, and the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. That's right. And it means that I am watching. I am watching. I am watching. I am what? I am watching. God says, I'm watching to see who's going to trust me. I'm watching. You know, Jesus says, this is in red. Jesus says, when I come back, will I even find faith? When I come back, will I even find people who are believing me? When I come back, will I even find people who, who, are, who, are, who are not afraid and who have no fear and that haven't given into culture and haven't, will I come back? Will I even find anybody like that? Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, he is. It's me, 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 me. Ooh, 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 pick me. You ever been in a first grader's class? And the teacher says, gives a question. Can anybody know the question? Oh, 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 oh. That's me. Pick me. Pick me. Pick me. And then, and then he says, I am going to certainly carry out, watch this, all my plans. 
verses six through nine. Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a youth. Watch this. Jeremiah is using the same thing Moses used in Exodus chapter three, verse four. He's claiming and confessing inadequacy, inexperience, which is a symbolism of, of youth or, or a child. But Jeremiah and Moses was leaving out some very important facts. God's support and God's presence that will go before you. <laughs> Verse 8 says, I am with you. Verse 8 says, I am with you. Of Jeremiah chapter 1, I am with you. And my support and my presence will help you overcome your deficiencies. Of course, we can't do anything without God. But you know what? The moment that you step out to say, I'm stepping out for God. You know, and I love to use the, 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 the example of I'm jumping. I'm jumping. Praise God, I'm jumping. I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going to jump. Here I come. I'm jumping. Hey, hey, God, here I come. I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump. And there's, there's one of two things. When you jump, God's going to catch you. Catch you. Or number two, you're going to fly. <laughs> Somebody said, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly. I believe I can soar. I see me running through an open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. Somebody's getting ready to fly. Oh, somebody's getting ready to fly. I need somebody to fly. Give me some flopping uh, arms so I won't look silly like by myself. Give me some flyers. Give me some flyers. I'm getting ready to fly out of here. I'm getting ready to see what I've never seen. I'm getting ready to do what I've never done. I'm getting ready to hear what I've never heard. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. And look what God says. Look what God says. God says, I am ready. I am ready to perform it. He says, I am ready. Verse 12, God says, he says, that's right. And it means that I am watching and I will certainly carry out my plans. I am ready to perform my word. Now, I want you to take three things. I don't, we're not going to, we're not going to be able to finish all this, but look, look at this. God makes three demands of Jeremiah. Three demands, write them down. God makes three demands of Jeremiah. Verse seven. Number one, stop voicing your disqualifications. Stop it. Quit it. You're just, you're just talking, you know, you know, Sister Judy, if I was educated, if I had a university diploma, if I was uh, 40 pounds lighter, if I was, if, if I wasn't, if I lived here, if I didn't, if I made some more, if I, if I, if I, if I, stop it. Stop it. God told Jeremiah. Stop voicing your disqualifications. Number two, verse seven, speak obediently my bidding. Just do what I tell you to do. You know, I love it when my girls were younger that they would do exactly what I tell them to do the first time. It never happened, but when it did, it blessed me. It's the same way with God. God wants you to do what he tells you to do the first time. Because if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. He won't show obedience. That's why you have to pay your tithe. That's why you have to, 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 to obey God in every small thing, big thing, small, whatever it is. He, he, Mary told the, the, the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. He said, speak obediently my, uh, my bidding. And then verse 18, he says, number three, refuse to fear. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, which implies somebody else has. The devil. The devil. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, won't you be afraid of their faces? And here's why. I'm with you to deliver you. And I, and I am going with you. He told Joshua, he says, I am with you. He says, I'll be with you. He told Joshua, Moses, Listen, listen to what he told Joshua. Moses, my, oh. Moses, my servant, is dead. He didn't say, Moses, my servant, has expired. 
Moses, my servant, is with me now, Joshua. He said, Moses is dead. Now get up, get these people, and get them. Go. And God's telling you today, that thing is dead. It is done. It's time to move on. It's time to get up and to move on. It's time to start walking in your purpose. Start walking in obedience. Don't you fear their faces. Stop talking about how you're not qualified. Ain't none of us qualified. Ain't none of us, if it hadn't been for the grace of God, we all would be in hell right now. Right now, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me, how he, get, he makes me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. And all makes me want to shout. Ain't nobody qualified around here. Only through him are you qualified. So stop washing your disqualifications because God causes us to change. Look at this. Change means new action. Write it down. Change means new action, new motion, and new momentum. Everything in life resists change. Even the universe resists, resists change and new momentum. And change. So in order to initiate change, you must concentrate as much power and energy in decision and thought and focus and, re and resolve into the smallest of motions. The bigger the change, the greater the concentration of power needed. I want you to see this table right here. I don't know if you can see this table right here, this table, the table right there. It, it's a very nice table. Uh, it needs painting, but overlook that. This table is very heavy. It's very heavy. I can't move this table hardly by myself. Now, if I try to move this table by myself, it's gonna take every ounce, I've got to put my, uh, it's like my daddy used to tell me on the farm, you got to put your back into it. You got to put your, you got to put your arms into it. You got to put your whole being into moving this. Time. And it's the same way with change. You got to put your thought into it. You got to put your focus into it. You've got to say, I'm not going to be the same thing I, I am the, uh, next year this time that I am right now. By this time next year, I'm not going to be the same. Why? Because we go from glory to glory to glory. Never be the same. Never be the same. You go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. You're not supposed to stay where you are. You're not. You don't want your child who is 18 years old sucking their thumb. It's time to move on. Get rid of the thumb sucking and take the diaper off. Oh boy, okay. All right. When you look at Moses' call, the first thing God requires was wisdom. You talked about it earlier. Somebody on here talked about it earlier. It is wisdom to take one small step, but you must put everything into it. And, and then the next step. And then the next step. The first thing that Moses did. When God called him, the, the, the first thing he did, what was the first thing that Moses did when God called him? He saw the, the, the bush that was burning and it wasn't being consumed. What was the first thing that he did? Anybody want to give me something right there? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Who, who, who wants to take a shot at it? What was the first thing that Moses did? Anybody? Are you still are you asleep? Where are you? Where are you? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Nobody? Okay, what, 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 is it, what was everybody saying? Yeah. Let me tell you the first thing that Moses did. He took his shoes off. How simple is that? The first thing that Moses did was he did something so simple. He took his shoes off and he said, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. God said to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? Lord, do you know I'm the only one serving you? Do you know what it is for me? Do you know what? 
I would have written it. I'm so pitiful. God told Elijah, Elijah, one of the simplest things he told him to do, arise and eat. Elijah, get up and eat. Get up, get up and eat. Get up and eat. There's a rain coming. And I need you to go, I need you to go and eat. There's a journey ahead of you. You've got to appoint, you got to anoint Elisha. You got to anoint, you got to anoint. And, and then what did he do? He got up. It's the simplest thing. The first step is the smallest of emotion, of emotions, but it changed the world. It changed the world. It gave us the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses gave us, the, God and Moses gave us the 12 tribes of Israel. What was the first thing that the disciples did? What was the first thing that the disciples did? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Anybody want to take a shot at what's the first thing that Eli, that the disciples did when Jesus called them? What was one of the first things that, that Peter, James, and John, what was the first thing that Peter did? What was the first thing? He threw his nets away. He threw them away. He gave them away. He just got rid of his nets. He just got rid of his nets. They dropped their fishing nets, but it changed the world. What is it that you got to do? The smallest step. The smallest step. God will give you an instruction, and then you decide if you're going to obey. God will give an instruction, and if you'll obey him with the small things, he'll, he'll see if he can trust you with the biggies, the biggies, the biggies. If he can't trust you to pay your tithe, don't ask him to, 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 get, you, to get you out of debt and give you a million dollars. He ain't going to do that. I want you to change the world. God says, I want you to change the world. We're still changing the world. Then he said, speak obediently. I got to go. I got to hurry. It is always wise to listen to God's voice and then obey. Because there are consequences if you don't. But there are rewards if you do. And look at the, look at the, look at the, the reward of, of look, at, look at Saul, for instance. Saul's, uh, uh, Saul's uh, father had lost all these donkeys, and he sent Saul and his and a, and a servant to go go find my, these these donkeys, son. I want you to go find them. And, and and look what happened. He said, "Is there a seer in town?" And 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 the in the, uh, the 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 he's, he met he he met Samuel, and Samuel said, "I'm the seer," and God said, "This is the man. This is him right here." He says, "I want you to go meet me over here." And then he anoints Saul. And then I want you to look at the sequence. It's first, it's first Samuel, oh, chapter nine, and, and verse ten. He says, he says, uh, uh, chapter ten rather, at verse seven. Then Samuel took a flask of oil, poured it on his head, and kissed him, and said, "It's not because the Lord has anointed you commander of his inheritance." He said, "When you've listen to the prophecy. Look at this. Watch this. When you've departed from me today, look at the fulfillment of the prophecies." When you've depart, you're going to find two men. Look how specific God was. By Rachel's tomb, and then the donkeys, and, and the territory of Benjamin, they will say to you, the donkeys which you were looking for has been found. Now your father has ceased. What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on forward. Chapter, uh, verse 3, go on forward. Then you shall go on forward from there. Then God's talking to somebody right now saying, it's time for you to go forward. It's time for you to put the past behind you and to go forward. God said, it's time for you to put the past behind you and to go forward. He said, then you're going to go forward. Come to the terebinth tree of Tabor. Three men, chapter 10, verse 3. Three men, three men is going to become God at Bethel to meet you. One of them is going to be carrying three young goats. Another carrying three loaves of bread. And another carrying a skin of wine. They're going to greet you, give you two loaves loves. Somebody's about to get increased this year. Somebody's about to get increased this year. Now who am I talking to? Let me see who's ready for some increase. Uh, let me see if anybody's ready for increase. Just give me the word increase right there. Increase. You just like being lost and down, down and out and uh, broke and broke, busted and disgusted. <laughs> somebody said increase. There's somebody which people are like, mm, okay. Then he says, you're going to greet, give you two loaves of bread. 
and which which is meaning increase, and then you shall receive from their hands, and and and, and then you're going to receive from their hands, and that you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistines there, and it will happen when you come there to the city that you're going to meet a group of prophets. They're going to be coming towards you from the high place with instruments, a tambourine, flute, harp. And then the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you. You're going to prophesy. You're going to prophesy. I speak that to you right now. You're going to start prophesying. You're going to prophesy over your children. You're going to have communion. You're going to say, let's get together. You're going to tell your husband, honey, it's time for us to get together as a family and have communion. And then God's going to use you. God's going to use your husband. God's going to use your children to start prophesying. You're going to prophesy with them. Then you're going to be turned. You're going to be turned. You're going to be turned into another person. Who am I talking to right now? It's going to be turned into another person. You see who am I talking to right now? You're tired of being in the same old, same old, same old. Now you're getting ready to turn. Somebody just say turn. God's going to turn you around. God's going to turn it around. God's going to turn your situation around. Turn, 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 turn. And then let it be when these signs come to you that you just do as the occasion demands. You just do. For God is with you. For God. The Lord has appointed you. Confirmation. His prayer was answered. Found the donkeys. Confirmations, big tree at the table, three men uh, on their way to Bethel, one with three goats, one with three loaves of bread, provision, leather with a bag of wine, joy. A leather with a bag of wine means joy. Joy is coming to you in this season. Joy is coming in. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Who's ready to laugh again? Who's ready to have joy in your house? Who's ready to go to another place in God? Prophets will come to prophesy. Jesus, the spirit of Jesus is the prophecy. And then number five, the spirit of God is going to rush on you. The spirit of God is going to rush on you with power. And then look at this, impartation. You will, re you will begin to prophesy. Impartation. There's an impartation that's coming to you from this Zoom call today. There's an impartation that's coming to you from this past weekend where you've been in, in, in services. There's an impartation that's coming to you. Like faith, like spirit, like destiny, like anointing. You will never, I prophesy, you will never be the same again. I prophesy, you will never, there's an imp, I said there's an impartation. Paul said, I got to come to you because I got something to impart into you. I got something to impart into you. And then he says, he says, you will be changed into a different person, transformation, a different person, transformation. And after this, after all this, do whatever you find to do. Walk in your giftings, walk in your callings, walk in your anointings. And here's why. Number nine, God is with you to help you. God is with you to help you. The number three, this is the final thing. I got to go. Refuse to fear. Verse eight, Jeremiah says, do not be afraid of their faces. I'm with you. You must, some of you must root out, uproot, root out, tear down, destroy, overthrow others. You must build up. You must plant. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. The Lord, look at Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Write it down. I'm going to read it to you. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. The Lord used a prophet to bring Israel up from Egypt. By a prophet, he cared for them. Watch this. A nation was preserved by a prophet. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. A nation was preserved by a prophet. He said, I'm going to use you to root out, to bring a nation, your family out, your marriage out, your children out, your vision. You're going to root this thing out that God has put in you. Why? Because there is a spirit. Watch it. Write it down. There is a spirit of preservation that's on you. God's going to preserve you. God's going to keep you. He that abideth in the shadow of the almighty shall abide in the, that is coming up. Your family will not be lost. You hear me? Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household, you and your household shall be saved. God is dedicated to you. God is dedicated to your family. God is dedicated to to, to your ministry. God is dedicated to your nation. We are coming out. Preserved. The spirit of fear has no power on you. But God has not given you a spirit of fear. 
the power, love, and of a sound mind. You just got to believe. Got to believe. You got to believe. I want to give you an acrostic for believe, right? Write it down. Believe. B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E -E. You ready? You ready for this acrostic? Here it comes. Believe. B, because. E, Emmanuel. L, lives. I, E, expect. V, victory. E, every time. My friend Darlene Bishop gave that to me. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. I believe. And I'm believing for you right now. And I'm going to pray this prayer over you. And then you're going to go into prayer time. And again, I want to say to Apostle Yinka, thank you so much to all the leadership, to all the powerful women of God. God has a purpose and a destiny for your life. Amen. There is something that is stirring in the atmosphere. And God is looking. God is watching. Amen. Without Amen. Spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, or any other thing. Now, Lord, I thank you for every woman of God that has been present on this Zoom call today. I thank you for the anointing of God that is transferred to their lives, that you're yes, going Lord. into every home right now. I thank you in Jesus' name that they're receiving prophetic prophetic power and prophetic yes. impartation, a download Amen. of what you're going to say and what you're going to do in their lives. I, I halt and I and say in Jesus' name, every lie of the enemy falls to the ground. Every Amen. lie of the enemy must go. I say Amen. in the name of the Lord, that they rise in power, that they rise in victory. I say Amen. in the name of the Lord, they will no longer be bystanders. They Amen. will no longer be observers. They will Amen. no longer have a victim mentality. God's yes. not giving us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Amen. And bless be God who causes us to triumph. But yes. I think that they're rising up, that they're using their voice, and they're becoming yes. an end time army of the Amen. Holy Spirit warriors that you have assigned in this last hour and for this last Jesus. day. And I thank you for the testimonies that are coming this year, and yes, they Lord. will never be the same again. I say. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, show yourself strong on yes, their Lord. behalf. And I yes, say Lord. in Jesus' name that they will rise up and they will do great exploits. They that the God shall be strong and they will do great and mighty exploits. In yes, the name Lord. of the Lord, we declare yes, it Lord. and we say, Amen. Amen. To God, amen. 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 Yeah. You may now mute yourselves. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Oh, we needed to just connect in faith. That was powerful. That was awesome. You know, that was really a, a life transforming impartation. I just felt it. I was just vibrating. I felt the impartation at what at one point. You know, and I know that all of our speakers carry such a grace on their life. Not just the words that they bring, but the impartation of the spirit of God. You know, as Dr. Jacobs was ministering, I believe that there's a warring anointing, a lioness anointing upon her life that she has transferred onto people even today. You know, and I thank God. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacobs, for that powerful word. We are going to have to go over and listen to it because we are recording it. Go back and listen over and over to pick out some specific instructions that were given to us tonight. 
And I believe that God has spoken some pivotal words into people's lives that we need to go and run with. We need to go and walk with it. Because many things were said today, and I know that different things are for different people, different words for different people. And as you begin to you know, process that word in your life, you will see the manifestation of all that God has ordained for you in this season, in this hour. We are stepping into our new season. I would just like to um, plead with uh, Dr. Jacobs not to leave yet. Um, we're gonna have all our speakers pray. I know uh, Reverend Betty is not here today, but Reverend Celia is here, Pastor Mary is here, uh, Mommy Maduba is here, and um, Dr. Jacobs and myself. And we are going to anoint the women because I, I did tell people to have anointing oil ready. And so we are going to pray over the anointing oil. I'm going to have the speakers who pray one after the other. Then after that, we are going to, I will pray last and we are going to stand up physically and then the shofar is going to be blown, amen. And then we we'll anoint ourselves with the oil that we have prayed over, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So please everybody, wherever you are, you know, we appreciate all our speakers. I, I, I can't, I don't even know what to say, but I will do more of the vote of thanks after, but I don't want us to leave. I just want to read one or two things that I sense the Lord also laid uh, upon my heart as we were preparing for this meeting. He says, I'm removing things that have covered the women. There are some women that, that, you know, it's like they have been covered, but now God is going to remove the covering so that it can be seen. They are carrying great gifts and graces, but they are hidden. So God is going to remove whatever is covering you so that you can be seen. This is a new season we are stepping into. Maybe that is for one particular woman. I don't know, but God is going to do it in your life as these women pray. I felt that anointing coming from Dr. Judy Jacobs for exposure, for exposure. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. He says some of them are tied to old concepts and ideas that have become obsolete. And God is going to break you loose, disconnect you from those old concepts that are not allowing you to move forward. So in this anointing, we are releasing some of these things and all those things that have been declared over the speakers. He said, um, God is uh, destroying and removing limitations, the limitations that have hindered your advancement in life and ministry. The power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to remove it tonight. We are plugging our faith in, in the name of Jesus. He said, and I believe that it's not just because I'm reading it, it's some of the things that the speakers have spoken and the anointing they have released from yesterday to today. That is what is going to happen with this. We are wrapping the anointing up. Hallelujah. He said, I'm doing a new thing, a fresh thing with the women in this generation. And I'm removing labels of suppression labels upon their lives that have suppressed them it's going to begin to remove it he said i'm rebuilding ancient landmarks that have been in ruins through these women i'm going to rebuild ancient landmarks through them ancient anointings that have been seeking to find expression because of a price tag that has been on it is going to be released upon these women there is a price tag on certain anointings you know, we want to carry the anointing of Catherine Coleman, of Maria Woodward Etam, of, of Benin and all that anointing for miracle signs and wonders. There's a price tag on it, but he said, I'm going to begin to release these ancient anointings and these fresh mantles upon these women at this hour. You are going back loaded because God is going to pour this oil. I saw it as we were praying. There was an oil of commissioning and sending you forth out to manifest the kingdom of God. So I believe that as these women are going to pray, something is going to happen. You know, uh, Mommy Maduba just sent me a text right now. I mean, it was in the afternoon. I only just saw it. That yesterday, while she was ministering, one woman said she was slain in the spirit. You know, it's already started happening. And I know some of you felt it. Some of you were on your knees praying and power hit you. We are going to experience that afresh now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said there are generational anointing coming upon them for impacting generations yet unborn. 
So we are getting ready for this impartation, for this unction, for this commissioning of the Holy Ghost upon our lives tonight. We are ready. We are ready. Father, we say yes, Lord. We are ready to stand up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask um, Dr. Jacobs to, as we take our anointing oil, there is an amalgamation, a combination of anointing from these women of God that is going to propel us into new places and new things. You begin to do things differently in the name of Jesus. You are going to take your city by storm in Jesus' mighty name. No more shyness, no more timidity, no more weakness, but the strength of the most high and a fresh anointing, a revivalist anointing, an anointing to tear down, to tear lions into pieces and tear hope in the heavens of our nation. God is going to release that upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we open our anointing oil and get them ready? While I'm going to call on the, on the speakers to pray one after the other. Hallelujah. And then we're going to stand up and the shofar will be blown. I, I hope, um, um, what's that? Pastor Faith, I hope you are ready for us. You know, yes. with the shofar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I please uh, call on Dr. Jacobs to start the prayer for us? And then as we are praying over the anointing oil, I'm praying and releasing these women into all that God has ordained for them in this season. And we are commissioning them by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, can you put her back on, please? Is, is she there or is she gone? Okay. Controls, can you let me know if Dr. Jacobs is still online? Okay, we'll move. We'll move to um, Pastor Mary. Okay, Pastor Mary, is Pastor Mary still on the line, please? Hello, I'm here. Okay, pray Pastor God. Mary, can you please pray yes. for us and pray over the women? Yes. Oh, Father, we are so excited about this. We are so ready for this. We are so desperate for more of you. And Father, we just come today. We thank you for this oil that we have in our hands, Lord, a symbol of your mighty, powerful, gentle, amazing Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father, for you're going to do things tonight, which is going to make a difference, not just in our lives, but in the generations. And Father, I just had a picture of people who have settled down into a rut it's like a ditch and it's been so slippery and so difficult to get out that the people have become weary and they've got comfortable in the ditch and look and you're just pulling us out of the ditch and we see this new horizon and it's as far across this plane and lord we just thank you and um it says that the way of the righteous that he's making a clear path for our feet and God is getting stuff out of the way which has been stumbling us and um, discouragement weariness things that have been in the way and so father we thank you that you're going to do that tonight and we just speak to that weariness to the discouragement to the lack of vision to the just getting settled in less than what you have for us father and we just receive from you father we love you so much we receive from you everything that you have for us tonight Lord, we thank you. We receive it not just for us, but for the generations, Father, for the, our spiritual children, for our yes. natural children for all the ones that will come after us for all the ones that we love that we're praying for we thank you god that it would be like a rock thrown in the middle of a lake and the ripples will go right far across the lake so we surrender ourselves to you and we receive from your hand with great gratitude and we thank you father in jesus name amen amen hallelujah i would like to call uh, reverend celia please to pray Father, we thank you for this moment of destiny. We thank you for our burning bush. 
We thank you, Father, for this moment where deep is calling unto deep. We hear your word. We hear your command. And right now we stand up. But Father, we cannot proceed forward unless your wind, the wind of your spirit lifts us, unless you make straight paths for our feet. So, so Father, right now we open our hands and as we lift them in surrender, we say, wind, blow. Holy Spirit, blow. We speak to the nations. Lift yes. up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted Ma up. Let the shata. king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. We go in as servants of the living God. We yes. speak into the lives of, of those under the sound of my voice tonight uh, that where doors have been shut, they will be open. Uh, Amen. When gates have been shut before you, they will be open. Father, Amen. we speak that about turn. We speak the wind of the second, the second uh, 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 opportunity. For opportunities that have passed us by wasted years. You spoke to us tonight and you said that restoration has come. So we stand on your word and we proceed forward in restoration. Amen. In a hundredfold restoration. We speak courage into our hearts. Where there was fear, we rise up. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Tonight Amen. the lion has roared. Tonight yes. the lioness says roar back. We say heaven roars and we roar back with a yes. And yes. we roll back with the now. And we roll back with the willingness, Lord. And we lift up our hands and we receive strength. And we receive wisdom. And we receive understanding. And we receive courage. And we receive boldness. And we receive expertise. Amen. And we receive strategy. And we go forth in power. And Father, we saw what you did with Saul God. You yes, put things Lord. together. And so we thank you for the power of the new man. The power of a new mind. We thank you that the impossibility has already become mission accomplished. Yes. In this day of anointing, we thank you for consecrated living. We Amen. thank you that you are first over our lives. You are last over our lives. Of yes. your government in our lives, let there be no end. We Amen. speak for that there is a new day in our lives. We yes. look not to the former things, but we yes. look to the things that are yet to come. We Amen. ask every promise of God, every promise and every prophetic word of God concerning our lives, and we step into the arena of change. We Amen. step into the arena of increase. We step into the arena of power. We step into the arena of authority. We step into the arena of influence. We step into the arena of increase and of plenty right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for governmental anointings that are being Thank stirred you, up inside of us, not just God, in passion, but stirred up inside of us. Thank you for the prophetic anointing. Thank you for the healing anointing. Thank you, Father, for the skillful anointing, for the strategic anointing. Thank you for deliverance anointings. We yes. receive them in abundance. And Father, today Amen. we say is the beginning of a new day. Just Amen. as what for Saul, you didn't turn him into just an ordinary man. You yes. turned him into a king to rule. Yes, so tonight God. we rise up in our anointing and we rule oh, over great territory. Oh, and we rule oh, over oh, new territory. Oh, and we say oh, the kingdom oh, is oh, come oh, and it's come through oh, us. Oh, oh, in oh, Jesus' oh, mighty, oh, glorious, and awesome name. Amen. 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 I just want the women before I call on uh, Mommy Mari, but I want the women just place your hand on your stomach on as uh, representing your spiritual womb and let's pray in the spirit into those prayers that have been prayed right now. Pray in the spirit. We are activating the prayers that have been prayed over us even right now in the name of Jesus. Robo koto polima Ruakam palimo regede lebo soto burugada baya mo broko topo lebo bosha makapo topo yekete lebo ze urabaka soto borekete bolo bosha masekeria barabaka sada da 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 roboko she nebasa Father we thank you Lord God yeka topo rekete that God those words those declarations of God they are resting upon us they are resting upon our lives in the name of Jesus roboli kato nezura gaboshe tora basa. We have not gathered in vain. We know, Father God, you said through these women, oh God, these anointings and these graces and these virtues, oh God, are falling upon us in the name of Jesus. And we're experiencing, oh God, deliverance and healing. Oh God, we're experiencing a lifting by the power of your Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.
Hallelujah. I will call on Mommy Madiba to uh, also pray as we're praying over this oil before we anoint ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, ancient of days, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. I lift up this oil. Lord God Almighty, I use it as a point of contact for every oil, oh God, that is in the different homes. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for what you have done in our lives in this meeting. Yesterday, yes. Lord God in heaven, you, you made it very clear to me. Change, change of the wicked that God broken off the lives of so many. There was so much deliverance. And even yes. today, Lord, you are doing the same thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. I see everyone that is out there. I, I command this chain, every chain of limitation. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it yes. be broken. Every body of the wicked that is on your shoulder, Amen. I command it to be yanked off from your shoulder in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every yoke, I break every yoke, I break every yoke. Every form of limitation, whatever has kept you on one spot, running around one mountain for so long, in the name of Jesus, I break that limitation. I Amen. Break that limitation. In the Amen. name of Jesus, I command Amen. you to move to your next level. Yes, Amen. I command you covering cast of the wicked over your life to be burnt by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You Amen. covering us from hell. Oh, you oh, 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 of, da, 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 da. of some yes, people Lord. making it difficult for them to ascend their next level. In the name of Jesus, I destroy you covering cast. I destroy you covering cast. And I set God's people free in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you told us you have released healing. Healings, healings, oh God, of every form of, form of wonder, you know, that is in the heart of your people. So many that are going through emotional hurt, emotional wounds, depression, and all kinds of emotional and spiritual ailments. Some have become so discouraged by one thing or the other. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release encouragement into your spirit. I release healing from the throne room upon you. I declare that you're moving forward. You're moving forward. You're moving forward. You are stepping out to your next level. I command you, right inside your spirit, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord God is risen upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, ancient of days, I call forth an empowering of your daughters your sons, whoever is connected with us on this platform. Lord, I call forth your empowering anointing upon them, upon every one of us. Lord, the power to become transformation agents. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it. The power to become church agents. The power to begin to make meaningful impacts in our generation. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ancient of days, take over every one of us. I begin to speak to the womb of your spirit. Come alive. You see the greatness that is tied down, that is lying dormant in that spiritual womb. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. In the name of Jesus. I command the standing up in your spirit. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Whatever has tied you down, whatever has held you down, Today, receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Move on to your next level. For the glory of the Lord God has come upon you. Greater grace, I release it upon your life. Greater grace to do the impossible. Greater grace to do unusual exploits for the master. Greater grace to overtake those that have gone ahead of you. Greater grace, greater grace to become a wonder to your generation. Receive it, receive it, receive it. By the time this oil touches your life, by the time you use it to anoint yourself, all that we are pronounced over this oil will be activated in your life and in your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're not hearing you. Apostle, you are, you are on mute. Apostle, you are muted. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Go 
I'm asking, oh God, let the fire of the Spirit of God flow into this oil in every home in the name of Jesus. The anointing and the power for increase, for exponential growth, for multiplication in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of fire. Lord God, that will remove, oh God, the things that have covered these women. Let it flow into the oils in their home in the name of Jesus. Convert those oils into tools of deliverance, of healing, of miracles, of power in the name of Jesus. Father, begin to destroy and remove people, Father, from pits, from holes, we are the enemy has kept them in Jesus' name. We are the enemy has hidden them. Father, we pray for the anointing of exposure in the name of Jesus. Let every cup that has been placed over their life to limit them be removed by fire. Be removed by fire. Be removed by fire in the name of Jesus. Every sickness that has hindered you from progressing in ministry, I command that sickness to die. By the authority in the name of Jesus from tonight, you will not see it anymore. The Amen. Egyptians that you have seen today, you will not see them forever in the name of Jesus. Whatever has dropped you back, whatever has pulled you back, the hand of God cut it off tonight. In the name of Jesus, there is liberation. I say there is liberation, there is deliverance, there is freedom being released unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everything that you have lost in life and ministry, recover all, recover all, recover all, recover Amen. all by the Amen. power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. While we release upon this oil, the anointing, the power, oh God, to do a new thing, to do fresh things in this generation, that every limit of suppression is removed. God, we are asking for our amalgamation of anointing generational anointing for impacting generation impacting cities father we thank you for a takeover anointing oh god Amen. taking over territories in Amen. the name of jesus everything Amen. will become easy there shall be no more struggle no more delay god you said there shall be speed in jesus name we release speed we release Amen. speed we release speed right Amen. now in the name of jesus Amen. thank you father Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, I would like you to put some of the oil. This anointing oil is powerful and loaded. Put some of that oil in your hand. Lay hand upon yourself and pray. Begin to pray. The power of God is coming upon you. The fire, the fire. I feel a fresh fire, a fresh fire. Somebody's going to be fired up by the power of the Holy Ghost. No more will you be an echo or a whisper. You are going to be a massive voice of change in your generation, in your city, in the name of Jesus. There's a turnaround taking place right now in your life. Lay your hands and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, prophesy to yourself. Begin to decree what you want to see happen in your life, in your life, in your life. Father, we thank you that this anointing oil, this power oil, this oil of commissioning, oil of release, oil of refreshing, oil of power, oil of grace. Oh, rego de baya. Let it begin to walk in our lives. Let it remove limitation, remove hindrances, remove the sickness, remove disease, remove every oppression of the devil in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, beloved. Pray. Something is happening. Fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Fresh anointing upon me. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy. No more slowness. No more smallness. Oh, enlargement. 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 Fruitfulness. Just like Dr. Jacobs mentioned. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness, fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the anointing to stand up. Stand up and be a voice. Stand up and be counted. Oh, yes, stand up and occupy our place that you have given to us. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is causing us to stand up. In the next one minute, we are going to all rise up. And I'm going to call on Pastor Faith. Can we put on Pastor Faith? She's going to blow the shofar. 
As she blows the shofar, we all get up. Hallelujah. She's going to blow the shofar seven times. At the first blowing of the shofar, we all stand up because we are standing up. Hallelujah. And then she blows it six more times and we let out a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can we put Pastor Faith on? Pastor Faith, can you raise your hand? Let them know where you are. Pastor, can you speak? Can you speak? When you speak, they will know where you are. Among hundred and something women, they need to locate you. Thank Hello, you. Hello, I'm over here. Ha, ah, yes, yes, yes. So you're going to blow it seven times, but at the first blowing, we all mm -hmm. stand up. And then as you blow it after the sixth, seventh time, we all let out a shout of victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. that they were healed. I don't know who the person is. You know, can you identify yourself? We are having testimonies, things are happening in people's lives. Glory to God. Hey, Kashatabaya. If you have a testimony, raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand. Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, we, we have to just look through the, the, the chat to see who it was. But I know people are having testimonies and your life will not be the same again. In the name of Jesus, there's so much fire. We thank God for tonight. We thank God for the two days. It's been great. It's been awesome. I'm still feeling the presence of God upon me right now. Something has happened. There has been an impartation. There are things that have been in your life for years that God has removed. Through the power flowing from these women of God. Because they carry a deliverance anointing. Amen. Oh, uh, it's like you shouldn't stop. It's like you shouldn't stop. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you to all our speakers. Reverend Betty King, Reverend Celia Collins, Mama Gloria Maduba, Pastor Mary Van Gundy. Oh, it's been awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Somebody says, I feel washed. Can you please write your experience while I'm talking so that I can say it out? He said, I feel washed. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you very much for thanking me. Oh, praise God. Tell us your experience. What did you feel? What did you sense as the prayers were going on? Let us know what is, what is happening to you. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to spirit-led worshipers. Oh, for wonderful, wonderful worship. Somebody said, I feel empowered. Somebody says, I feel the joy of the Lord in my heart. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Sister Geraldine. God bless you. He said, I've sensed the limitation removed. Somebody said, I've sensed the limitation removed. I've been compelled to stand up. A shifting. Yes, somebody said I was healed my, from my back. Okay, Sister Joanne. She said she was healed of back pain. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody says, I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm revived. Praise God. That is what I really love. Yes, that's what I'm expecting. We are revived. We are renewed rejuvenated glory glory somebody says i'm ready someone says i feel empowered i feel fresh fire in my life ah thank you jesus we are grateful oh god we are grateful lord hallelujah ah the atmosphere in my house has shifted yes it must shift hey hey Kalebo soto your house is the gate of heaven in the name of jesus oh thank you thank you lord i just want to appreciate everyone spirit-led worshipers Sister Christy, oh, I feel renewed, praise God. Sister Christy, for that time of solo, the people have been talking about it. We give God the praise. I want to thank our sister Keziana for even the solo as well, powerful. We thank God, we thank God. I want to appreciate everyone, even a page, our own page for that spoken word, powerful spoken word. We thank you, Lord. And I want to thank, you know, everybody. I want to thank the FMI team for the prayers, for the help, here and there, I want to appreciate you. The Lord will bless you and increase you in the name of Jesus. You know, Paige is saying, God pulled me out of a slippery place. Wow, wonderful. The spirit of the Lord is here. Indeed, he's here. Indeed, he's here. It's like we shouldn't stop. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you. My heart is overflowing. It's overflowing with thanksgiving, with appreciation. I just feel like crying. God, God is so good. God is amazing for what he has done in all our lives in this conference. Ah. I want to thank you. Some of you are, you know, Madibai, thank you. You have carried this conference in the spirit with me, praying and just, you know, monitoring in prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Celia. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Mary, for everything that you have done. I can't even thank you. And all the women that called, thank you very much, that joined in. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for staying from beginning to the end, from yesterday. You stayed till the end. God bless you. Ah, somebody says I was vibrating within, from within. The vibration, God has imparted something great into your life, daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, let's just wave our hands and thank the Lord. We give you praise for a great impartation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, we want to encourage you next year. Uh, I think we have the the date for next year. We are trusting God to go back to Marriott Hotel next year. And we are believing God for a, a mega conference that people are going to come from different nations and cities to join us. You know, God has done great things with this conference at this time. And so next year, September, September, I think is the 11th and the 12th. So please put that in your diary. We believe God that the pandemic would have been over and gone. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Next year is going to be great, greater than this. In Jesus' mighty name. But we are going to meet together. We are meeting together. We are not going to just do it online <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Thank you all very much. And I want to appreciate my precious husband for being very supportive. I know I've been trying to call him to come on the screen and he's been hiding, but I want to appreciate him too. Thank you, my darling. Thank you, Pastor Ne, for your support and help throughout this conference. I want to thank my son, Nathan, who has been behind the scene. He has been the control team all by himself. Thank you, Nathan, God bless you. Thank you, Olivia, for doing what you are doing wherever you are as well, joining in. And everybody that has helped out one way or the other, God bless you and God keep you and God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus name. Those of you who will still like to give, they will put up this um, uh, bank details up and the PayPal account up. Some people have sent a message that they couldn't